Hi, welcome to this episode of Light Little. Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to respond to a question that we actually got in the community. And I'm going to read a little bit of this uh, to make sure I get all the details right before we, we uh, dive into the uh, solution. And so the, the question is, uh, you know, a standard virtual server with layer 7 functionality processes connections using the full proxy architecture, i.e. the three-way TCP handshake and initial data packet are processed on the client side of the connection before the big IP LTM system initiates the TCP handshake on the server side of the connection. And I'll draw that up here in a second. Um, and then he, he uh, goes on to say, if my pool is down, the state of the virtual server is independent I mean, the, um, if the pool is down, the virtual server is still listening on port 443 and accepts the client three-way handshake. So um, his question is, the state, is the state of the virtual server independent from its full proxy architecture functionality? Can please, please, can someone confirm? Okay, so thank you for the question. And let's redraw some of, of what I just said. We have uh, the way the standard virtual server works is we have a client, we have the big IP, and then we have uh, the server. And so if we just have the big IP down here, the way the standard virtual server works is we have a uh, TCP three-way handshake, uh, um, the, uh, the SYN, the SYN ACK, and then the ACK. And once that occurs and the request comes in, so we have the, the SYN, the SYN ACK, the ACK, and then uh, say in his case he has a layer seven um, request, and that is uh, you know say an HTTP GET. And he has one additional connection, I mean condition he didn't mention that I'll get to at the end. But in this case, the request comes in. At this point, then the big IP will uh, will do its thing uh, in requesting back to the server, and so this whole three-way handshake occurs again, and then the get comes down to the server, and then so on. So it's this, this independent relationship of client and big IP, big IP and server. And that's the way it normally works in normal operating mode. When this fails and the server dies, then when new connections come in, he's right in that the, the, the big IP will then do a three-way handshake, and then a get comes in. And at that point, what the big IP will do when there are no resources on the back end to handle that request is it will ACK that request, and then it will send a reset. So you'll get the ACK for the request. Um, and of course, you had your, your SYN your SYN ACK, and your ACK. And so, yes, what's happening on the back end is the virtual server state is down because you're, you have no available services on the back end. But the virtual address that the virtual server uses is still up and responding to traffic. So his additional question, or I mean, his additional piece of information is, what if you put SSL on top of this? So let's do this again with down here. And so we have our three-way handshake. Uh, well, my arrows are not really great. And so this is our three-way TCB handshake. Okay. And then we start your client hello. And then I'm not going to draw all this up, but just suffice this to say, then we have our SSL uh, session set up. So your key exchange and all that. And if we're good here, then the request comes in. And with standard, assuming we're in this same state of, you know, no pool members available, we are going to ACK that request, and then we're going to reset. Now, this is how the, the, default, the default behavior of the system is set up. 
what you can do is right and like if you if this is unacceptable on the client side and there's scenarios where that that might be true for you in that if the if, if the services are unavailable on the server side why go through the process of allowing a handshake to happen uh, or in this case allowing the handshake and then SSL negotiation to happen because now you're tying up your uh, your, your transactions for second resources uh, with your crypto. If that's an unacceptable situation for you, what you can do is attach a little I rule, um, and that I rule is um, in the flow init event, and you can do um, a, a simple if condition. If you're active, members of P1, whatever your pool is, is less than one, then you can discard if, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the options here, so I'll just go ahead and comment both of those out, and then you can activate whichever one uh, that you want to do. So discard, discard and drop are the same thing, but both those work, and then uh, you can um, reject. and. Uh, and so, so this I rule you can apply to your standard virtual server with or without SSL. And what will happen is if that pool has no resources, it will, on flow init, it will then just, if, if it, so let me do colors here. Let me say uh, discard is uh, this color and uh, let's, do, um, let's do green uh, for, um, for the, uh, whoops, let's do pink for discard. What happens is in the scenario of discarding when this is in place, what will happen is this never gets responded to by Big IP. So if there are no members available, it'll just keep trying that sin packet, but will never respond. And in the case where uh, you're rejecting, um, and it's been a while since I've written one with reject, so that might be reset. I'll have to go look at the syntax, but it's been a while, so it's either reject or reset. I don't remember. But the, uh, the logic of the rule wouldn't change. It's just whatever that specific keyword is. In, in the case where we would reject on that sin being received, we would jump straight from there all the way down here to the reset, and then we would send that back. So where, why would you use one versus the other? Well, you might have a client that, that uh, you might break things if you don't send a reset. And, and typically, if your service isn't available, you, you want to have a good behavior where you're telling the client that, that hey, my service isn't available, so you'll reset the connection. Um, a, a situation that I've had personally before in that I don't want to respond is that if my services are unavailable and I have something a little bit upstream that's monitoring that virtual server, if it gets in the, the particular device I was using, there was no way to configure it uh, that it wouldn't mark the, the pool member up if it got any response. So that, that very initial sin act here declared the service good. And so I needed to use a rule like this to prevent the connection from ever completing. And so, anyway, I hope that answers the user's question in the community. Thank you for such a good question. And um, this is a, a, a fun thing to write up, or, or actually just draw up, for a Lightboard lesson. So thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, um, click uh, subscribe, and we'll see you out there in the community.